The Electoral Commission recently announced a roadmap for the next presidential and parliamentary general elections that will see all candidates restricted to campaigning through radio and TV and online platforms. However, this proposal enlisted condemnation from a section of politicians. <laughs> However, research by Uganda Communication Commission has found that there are about 25.4 million mobile subscribers in Uganda in a population of 40 million Ugandans. According to the Uganda Communication Commission, 15.2 million of these Ugandans have access to the internet and the majority of these are using their mobile phones to go online. However, only 2.5 million Ugandans are active social media users. Robert Sebunya is a digital technologist. Internet. So on, 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 on just the social networking sites, we have 2.5 million active Ugandans there. Uh, of that, of course, you have about 2.4 million, 2.5, it keeps oscillating, monthly active users of Ugandans on Facebook. Of those, we have about 180,000 Ugandans who are active on Twitter. Then we have about uh, 650,000 of them active on LinkedIn, which is mostly the professionals. And then we have a lot of, um, a lot of the other people who are just on uh, Instagram, which is shockingly mostly the male, about 36,000. Uh, but those are just people on social network working sites. So there are people who are accessing the internet uh, on our platform. Uh, we, we were able to identify about 7.9 million Ugandans who are active online. Uh, so these are people who, who log in and access an internet service from Zoom to other platforms, to other, other different sites and apps. So those are the ones that we're able to access. Sabunya explains that using digital platforms to campaign is more effective and less costly to candidates compared to the traditional ways of campaigns in Uganda. The cost, the cost of, of, of one person viewing your video one time is 0 0.01 cents of the dollar. That is less than 200 shillings. Multiply that by 100,000 people and you see that it's much cheaper to reach an individual using uh, digital channels. Twitter itself has technologies that allow you to, for example, a candidate to be able to, to put up a video. It's only one candidate who can do that, one person who can do that in the whole country. So it's called a broadcast. So you do a, 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 a broadcast that can only be seen once by everyone who logs into Twitter on that day. So now it will cost you $2,000 per day. That's about eight, 8 million, right? That's about 8 million uh, per day if you wanted every Ugandan who logs onto Twitter to see your tweet. Now, only one person can use that again. Only one person per country can use While he agrees that it may be hard to persuade candidates at first, Sabunya demonstrates how one can use other online methods to reach the intended audience in microseconds, including those who are carrying ordinary mobile phones, not necessarily smartphones. You know, with the internet technologies I'll be able to show you is uh, you can even fence off locations that you want to see your campaign, only those locations, all the way to a building. You can say only the people who enter into Acacia Mall and, and leave Acacia Mall should be able to see this kind of piece of advertisement. So all these technologies are available, but all the politicians are thinking about is doing kakuyege on Facebook pages. That can only reach 2.3 million people. You can even decide to just reach out to Ugandans who visit petrol stations, for example. Uh, So you'll be able to see a bunch of different petrol stations in, in, in Uganda, right over there. So you can target just people who go to a petrol station. With here you see the Akasha Mall. So basically what we'll do with this kind of campaign is we just fence off these locations for the next 60 days, starting today. So anyone who goes to these locations uh, will be able to see some of the campaign messages. And this is another way of scientifically reaching out to the audiences. The Electoral Commission also proposed that campaigns can be conducted on radios and TV. But according to the National Audience Measurement Survey conducted by Ipsos, an international research firm, 57.6% of the Ugandan population has access to radio, with only 7.3% watching television. Uh, from the total um, of about 22 million people, about 18 million um, have access to radio and at least uh, uh, listen to radio regularly, at least in the past seven days, uh, you'll see about uh, uh, 80 million uh, listening to radio at least daily. 
And then uh, with television, we have about uh, 7 million people who have access. Currently, even without owning a radio or television set, one can now listen to radio using mobile phones while traveling in a taxi back home. The entire country has got some level of access of at least a number um, of uh, radio stations. However, in terms of uh, the landscape, the central, the western region and the east have got uh, a wider reach of um, radio stations compared to um, the northern part of the country. Both Sebunya and Virginia Nkwans of Ipsos agree that there is a lot to gain from going virtual campaigning in the long run. Jingo Francis, NTV.